Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Banner Saga. So we're here in camp. We have no food, um, and a bunch of people are injured, but that's all fine. Everything is fine. Um, we're also extremely low on fighters. Well, I guess just Cromer's injured. Well, and David. And I'll leave. And Mogan. And Rook. Everybody's injured. Anywho, we may as well move on, because we don't have any supplies to be resting here. We're just going to have to, uh, well avoid getting into fights if we can which we've not been doing a great job thus far and hope that this town has some supplies there's our morale and more of our fighters oh boy cannot be affording all these losses that we're taking the villagers here are completely oblivious to the destruction that is coming all we've seen is some dark figures far off they tell you aside from a few young families they're reluctant to pick up their things and join you Great, we didn't get any fighters, but we got some clansmen, so I guess that's good. Uh, we are going to have to spend all of our renown on food, basically. I'm assuming here. Okay, a week's worth of food should be fine, and then we still got a little bit left, a little bit of renown left over. Um, of course, we could always buy more food and rest, which would help with our morale. We're never going to level anyone up, though. Okay, good. Everybody's back at full health, and our morale is okay. We even got some renown left over. Anywho, nobody else is joining us. We got no one to talk to. Let's be on our way. God, we need more fighters. We need more everything, really. Harsh words from one mother to another draw the attention of the entire caravan. My daughter marries Ragni or no one. That reed-thin tramp you call a daughter won't provide sons. The insulted mother bares her teeth ready to attack. Um, let the argument play out on its own. That seems like a bad idea. Um, explain yourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. Ragni chooses my daughter on his own, the insulted mother says, but this one thinks I have something to do with it. Launching forward, the first woman flails wildly, shouting, Liar! The women are separated and eventually calm down, but you worry this is this far from over. Okay. Fair enough. Well, let's see how that goes, I guess. A mother's scream floods the caravan. Her daughter lies dead in a tent. We all know who did this. She spits, staring directly at the woman she scuffled with previously. Murder over a marriage? In these times? Something must be done. The accused woman remains silent. Um, let's investigate. A healer joins you in inspecting the young girl's corpse. An old infection, says the healer. No punctures, no choking, no poison. She died of disease. You report the news to the caravan. The mother admits that she'd always known her daughter was ill, and everyone moves on. Wait, that's it? We're not gonna... We don't, we're not gonna do anything to the lady who just tried to lie about someone murdering her daughter? No? Okay, that's fine. The imposing godstone of Bjorolf approaches. His severe visage makes it feel like he's watching you, even now. The caravan spreads out, happy to be free of the confining forest and in open fields. In fact, in honor of Bjorolf, some of the caravan crack kegs of mead and wine before anyone can stop them. To the only god that matters, they shout. Everyone drinks, and you're glad for the merriment that has swept over the caravan. Um... Inspect the godstone? You look up at the godstone, Bjorolf's head surrounded by images of casks and drinking horns. Though he was always depicted as being stern, Bjorolf was one of the most popular gods of men in Varl, the one who taught them how to brew. It seems like more than a coincidence that the long fields around Bjorolf's stone have always been excellent for growing anything you could need for a good drink. Uh, yeah. 
our morale is fine, and I'd like to keep going before our supplies start running out, so uh, let's get everybody up and traveling. You're openly mocked for suggesting that everyone get ready to walk some more. Still, it's not long before they've had their fun and you're back on the road. The caravan seems in a great mood despite everything that has happened. Excellent. I'd rather not uh, waste a bunch of supplies hanging out around here, especially when our morale is already pretty good. Thieving bastards, you awaken here. The small band of outlaws who had previously joined the caravan made off with a substantial number of supplies while everyone slept. A watchman tells you. Why in the depths were they allowed to join us to begin with? Oh, that's gonna... Ah, uh, it's gonna hurt morale. Oh, we needed the fighters, though. Rainweek is more of a smattering of farmhouses than a proper town. Though judging by stray dredge stalking through empty fields, it is barely even that anymore. Well, we had just enough supplies to get here, I guess. And then we lost a bunch of... Oh, we didn't have just enough supplies to get here. Okay. Rain of it comes and goes as a long series of farmhouses, abandoned and crawling with dredge. The farmers have probably already fled to Boar's Guard. You try to hurry past, but eventually spot a dredge start ambling in your direction. Oh, I hope this isn't a fight. What is that? Points out Oddleaf, up near one of the longhouses. In the distance, a large person, clothes seemingly covered in blood, is cursing loudly and stumbling about. He staggers into a longhouse, laughing. The dredge heading your direction turn back, roaring, and begin to pound on the longhouse door. They seem holding a grudge against this particular person. You doubt the doors will hold long. Uh, let's try and help the odd man with the blood-stained clothes. Against my better judgment, we should probably do something, you say. The others agree, even though it means putting them all at risk. As you quietly approach, the dredge have managed to splinter the door and break through. Hey, shouts a varl wearing all red, standing on the other side of the dredge. Came all the way up here just for me? He seems unconcerned about the dredge as he hoists his enormous sword. Is that Gunnolf? No. It's a different Varl. Who we have to have in the fight, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's take a look at our party. Which, for some reason, our turn order all got moved around. Um. God, we don't have that many, like, shields left. Oh, right, I need to have him in there. Okay, well... Put Akil and Moga in there, so we have some shields going. Um, bring Gunolf, bring Crummer. Crummer's got good armor break. Let's uh, throw him in there. Oh, Sigbjorn has good armor break as well. He's also level 5, which means we can give him that. Oh, he's already got an item. What do you have? Scarlet Feather, plus 2 move, minus 1 aggro. Ooh. Ooh, that's a neat item. I kind of feel like that would be better served on Rook, but I'll leave it on that guy. Rook's not high enough level for it anyways. Oh, well. Um, otherwise, let's throw Odd, uh, Nid in here so she can get a little bit of experience, and we will bring Rook as well. Yeah, that looks like a decent setup. What do I know? I've been probably doing this all wrong the whole time. But, you know, we could use the Renown from the fight. Hello, that's a lot of enemies. Okay, um, hmm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two our six. We're slightly outnumbered. Well, how do we want to do this? What is our, what is our best bet here? I don't even... I guess we can actually kind of fit everybody into the same space if we really want to, but... I don't think we do. So, crummer has got good armor break, which means we want him to be able to... put some damage on these dudes over here, right? Because these guys aren't actually particularly well armored. And I think Sigbjorn can probably uh, deal with them on his own. Let's do it. Alright, Ekil. Let's, uh... Um, I'd love to play defense, but I'd, we need to uh, damage this dude some before he gets a chance to start whacking us. And this guy gets to go soon as well. Who is going next? You. You're probably going to go for Sigbjorn. Not a ton I can do about that. 
All right, well, let's damage this guy while we got a chance. There we go. Knocked him down to half health. Uh, oh. Okay. Rude. All right, so Mogan... I want this dude to be somewhere where Crummer can hit him, so I actually don't want Mogan to block him off. Yeah, because unless he goes right there... Actually... I can't really get Mogan anywhere is the problem. I guess I may as well just put you two next to one next to each other so that you can uh, have the, your shield bonus. Okay, good. He's moving up to kind of where I want him to be. And then... Crummer can do this. Crummer can... Start working on that armor. Boom. Nice break. Oh, dear. Okay, that's the thing that needs to be dealt with. Now, Sigbjorn has Tempest, which is good. I'm not sure what level he has it at, but he could actually move over here and do a decent chunk of hurt to these guys. Oh, those dudes. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's another guy in that space right there, but there isn't. Um, who do I want to damage? You're already hurt. I could go fight you, but you're actually kind of separated right now, so if I just move away from you and kind of let you sort yourself out, that might be for the best. God, that plus two move is really friggin' useful, though. Alright, let's make this dude not useful anymore. Alright, here we go. Okay, Nid, from where she is, can now not really do anything. Hmm. Well, she has... Oh, that actually doesn't put anyone else in range. Well. Yeah, I guess just keep cracking this dude's armor. There we go. There we go. Got some more armor break on them. Oh, yeah. Crummer's taking a bit of a beating. Uh, what can Rook do? I can move Rook in, and he can just support with arrows. Who is going next, though? Not this guy. This guy? Okay. Well, I may as well move Rook uh, a little bit closer and injure that guy some. There we go. Okay, that dude's out of the fight for a little bit. I kill my man. Um... This is going to explode on this guy's turn. I could actually just kill this dude before his thing goes off rather than giving up the position that I have right now, which is probably not the worst idea. Um, so let's just keep wearing this dude's armor down. Wearing everybody's armor down, I should say. That's fine. Um, okay, so Mogan could actually go kill this dude. Actually, Mogan could go finish this guy off, and then I could have Sigur, uh, or Sigbjorn do something else with his turn, which seems like a better idea. Let's race around here and get rid of this dude before his things go off. There we go. Okay, that guy's doing something. Ow. Okay, now we're starting to take hurt. Big dude is about to go as well. But if I can crack the last of his armor, then Nid should be able to do a shit ton of damage to him. Although he's gonna hurt, uh. He's probably gonna hurt Crummer quite a bit. Go. Oh, he's doing the knockback thing. Okay, that's fine, because it means he's staying in range of everybody. And we. And just put some hurt on these dudes. So this is clockwise, so we want to target like so. Boom, there we go. Nice damage, nice splash. Oof. Okay, need. Yes, there's the damage. Bunk. Okay, excellent. Alright, Rook. Um so that guy doesn't do a lot of damage. A lot of these dudes aren't particularly threatening any anymore. We may as well just start uh, getting them out of the way. Oh, 
This guy's the only one who's left with, like, health. Alright, Echo. Keep cleaning up these dudes. Okay. We've damage, that's fine. Okay, and then have Crummer come up like so. Boom. He's gonna get to do damage. Not enough, though. I get one more turn. Ah! Uh, oh! Deflect. Beautiful. And then I think... For the kill, we gotta we gotta mark prey. Oh, oh, that gave me the kill in a promotion. I kind of assumed that if you killed someone while doing mark prey, the kill went to Rook, but it does kind of make sense that it doesn't. Go, okay, we got some renown. Welcome to my mead house, says Sigbjorn. Sigbjorn's house of mead. Wasn't expecting a varl as far south, says Ivor. Or this drunk. I can see that, says Sigbjorn. There are people huddled in the corners of the mead hall, looking on with uneasiness. Who are these... Who are you people, asks Rook. No, no, they're friends. They made this place. It's not really mine, says Sig Sigbjorn. You lord dredge back to a room full of unarmed people, asks Rook. What is wrong with you? Come on. I saved everyone in here, says Sigbjorn. They shared some fine drink. The best drink. Wait, I was saving your ass. Remember that part? If you knew you'd come up here... Sorry, if you knew you'd come up here, you could have told me. What do we do with this guy, asks Ivor. Uh, anyone here is welcome to join us. The townspeople show you a huge stack of barrels filled with quality meat and help you haul them back to the caravan. I'll miss this place. Good memories. Okay, well, we got some extra renown, we got some extra supplies. Hopefully, we did get a few extra fighters. With some help, you gather up the casks of mead and head back to the caravan. Sigbjorn and the other survivors in tow. The caravan gives the boisterous Varl a large berth as you set out for Boar's Guard. Uh, we should probably invest in leveling some people up while we have the chance. Um, like... We could bump Nid up. We could bump Crummer up and give him some more armor break. Oh no, his armor break is already maxed. Um, give him some more will, um, effort to spend. We do need people with more armor break. And we'll bump you up. Boom. And some of that. There we go. We go. Okay, I'll give you some more. Uh, there we go. That looks better. And now maybe we can split some of these items out that we're carrying around. Plus 15 crit chance. Eh. Plus two armor per rest. God, I don't have a lot of low-level items. To s hmm. What is Echo carrying? 15% dodge strength. And I'll just give Crummer the, the crit chance, I guess. Can't hurt. It's not like I can sell the items or anything. There's no real need for me not to uh, have items on everybody if they can carry them. Ugh, what did I do? Sigbjorn wakes in a pool of his own sick. Why am I surrounded by small people? The other clansmen let him sleep off his drunken stupor on the ground, and this morning he's paying the price. Um, let's help him recover. I'd like to keep this dude around. Reluctantly, your clansmen offer any food and drink they can scrounge together for the moaning barrel. When one offers thin mead, he pushes it away. In fact, take this away from me, he says, handing you his massive mead stein. Eventually, Sigbjorn comes to you. I won't get into details, he says. I was supposed to bring those casks from Reynavik back to Boar's Guard. I drank maybe half by accident. Point is, Sigbjorn continues, you don't tell anybody what happened, and I won't tell anyone about the mead you got, okay? Trust me on this one. You agree and get back to travel. Oh, 
Uh, we got an achievement. Because he gave us an item. I'm also going to turn the music down a little bit because it's gotten extremely loud at this point for some reason. There we go. The sounds of a skirmish alert, alert you to a varl surrounded by a half a dozen armed fighters. One man spots you and shouts, Leave us to our business. This varl killed my father without reason. The varl is about to respond when a man attacks. The giant swats the blade aside and silently watches for the next assault. Uh, let us hear what the varl has to say. The varl shrugs if unconcerned, saying, This one's father and I had a business deal. He lied. Now he's dead. Lies, shout the man. You murdered him over a lie, you coward. The men wildly attack the Varl, who deflects them well enough, but you're uncertain of how long he can keep it up. Uh, sure, we can defend the Varl, get ourselves some extra renown. Hopefully. Ivor, you say. We could use any Varl with a good sword arm, couldn't we? He nods, readying his weapon. The men immediately back off, the prospect of fighting your entire army is suddenly unappealing. Oh, I was hoping for some round from that. They watch from a distance, shouting obscenities and something about injustice. The Varl turns toward you. Didn't need the help, but if I'm going to travel, it may as well be in the company of other Varl. He falls in line with the others, and you return to travel. Plus one Varl. Um, I thought that was going to be a named character. Oh, we did get five renown for it. That's good, then. A flurry of snowfall seems to come out of nowhere, and quickly thickens until you're unable to see the man in front of you. You shout out a complete halt, but the screaming winds drown out the sound. A day passes before the blizzard abates, and clansmen start to reappear from snowdrifts. It quickly becomes apparent that not everyone is where you last saw them, and a quick search of the area is not enough to recover all the missing clansmen. Uh, I feel like that might hurt our, uh, our morale, just leave it, losing a bunch of people. Make a bonfire and wait for missing members to return. Um, we should probably search. It takes time to establish proper search teams, but you devise a way to quickly cover as much ground as possible. After a full day of searching, you find many survivors, but your successes are dampened by a number of frozen bodies, and others who have simply vanished. Disheartened, you return to travel. Oh. Oh, that hurt our morale even more. And now we're out of supplies. Well, oh, we're almost at Boersgard. The steep cliffs, the sprawl of Boersgard comes into view. A city of contrasting rich and poor, opportunity and gamble. Our best hope for salvation, or our graves. Man, the music is not playing around. Finally, you arrive at Borsgard, where the walls stretch for miles in both directions and are littered with the bodies of Dredge, Varl, and Man. Excuse the mess, shouts a voice from above the gates. Looking up, you spy a striking Varl, his face wreathed with matted black hair. Movement at the gate catches your eye. Dredge is still banging on the gate door. Gate doors without luck. Let us in, you shout. Sigbjorn pushes past. I won't be hearing the end of this for a while, he says, before yelling. Open up, Bulverk. They dug me out of Reynivik. You hear a laugh echoing on the wind as the doors creak. A dozen armed men, led by the massive Varl, make quick work of the dredge and usher you into the city. Oh, well, there you go. That was easy enough. You may be interested to know they brought a mender, says Sigbjorn. You didn't go to get a mender. Where's the mead? asks Bulverk. Sigbjorn shrugs apologetically. I guess the mender will do, says Bulverk. Either we've got a chance now, or we're completely screwed. I'm Rook. We've come a long ways, some as far as Skogar. Are you in charge here? In charge of the governor, I suppose, says Bulverk. Listen, if you have something to tell him, say it now, otherwise you're on your own. I don't care where you go, but stirring up trouble is probably the only reason you'll see me again. It won't be to talk. Mender, come along. We're going to see the governor. Bulverk and Sigbjorn leave with Avon, who goes willingly, signaling that he's fine. Fine. This is just like Frostfeller all over again. This is nothing like Frostfeller, Cyber. The one in Bearskin is probably leading the Ravens. Ravens? asks Rook. Is that good or bad? Depends on who they're working for, says Ivor. Hopefully it really is the governor and not someone trying to strong arm their way into his seat. I guess we wait for Avon to tell us if he comes back, says Rook. I'm not worried about Avon, says Ivor. I'm worried about the army of refugees we brought who don't belong here. Probably right, says Rook. Nobody ever heard a nice thing about Boar's Guard. So what now? We have to go to the docks and see what our options are, in case we need to leave quickly. Did you notice the city guards when we came in? What guards? asked Rook. I have a feeling the ravens are all they've got left. Something serious went down. And when Bellower gets here, he's going to walk right through this place without even breaking his stride. Let's keep to ourselves for now, says Rook. So, the docks.
Okay, once again. Music volume keeps bouncing up for some reason. All right, well, um, we should pick up some provisions real quick, you know, so we don't... Oh. Oh. Okay, well, that'll have to do. Um, I guess we're going to the docks because we don't have anywhere else to go right now. When you get to the docks, your heart sinks. Not a long ship to be seen aside from wrecks. Bodies float in the water. Buildings are trashed and boarded up. What happened here, murmurs Alette. They're all gone, says Avind, approaching alone. I see you had the same thought as me. Avind, you're okay, says Alette. I'm fine, says Avind. It wasn't a lie. The governor is here. He's in hiding. Why, asks Alette. Since the dredge started appearing, anyone with a ship and half a wit left long ago. People can't leave by foot. Food is scarce. The markets are bare. Boar's guard is a fire keg waiting for someone to tip it over. So the governor's paying the ravens to protect him against his own people, says Ivor. And keep the peace, says Avond, so to speak. It's more like a massacre any time there's a hint of an uprising. Where does that leave us, asks Rook. I promised, the menders pr promised him the menders' protection, Arborang. I don't think he's very popular there, says Avond. They're going to start tearing this place down to build new ships. We can ride the Ormsa River all the way to the capital. We're leaving another perfectly good city behind, says Rook. How long will it take to build new ships? Hold on, what happens to the people living in Borsgard? asks Alette. It's the best I could do, Alette, says Avond. He, he thought it could take as long as a month. You don't usually make ships out of scrap lumber. As soon as people figure out what's going on, there's going to be riots in the streets. A month? Why bother? Bellor will be here within the week, if not sooner, says Ivor. I'm open to suggestions, says Avond. Gods be damned, is there no end to this? asks Ivor. Ivor roars in frustration, leaving you standing by the docks. Alette gives you a worried look before chasing after him. Avond, says Rook, what do we do about Bellower? Avond says nothing for a moment. I don't know. Cool. We got problems to sort out. Lots of problems to sort out. Um, yeah, we should probably go have a word with Ivor, and then we're gonna need to find a way to get food. You find Ivor standing on the city walls overlooking the fields outside. Dredge are keeping their distance, but continue to gather. I'm okay, Rook, says Ivor. Ivor cuts you off before you can say anything. You know he's been through worse. Just feels like someone should cut us a break every now and then. If we want to be standing a month from now, we're going to have to be prepared. Um, what did you have in mind? First off, our clansmen need a place to stay. They'll get torn to pieces out in the streets. I'll keep an eye on the dredge up here. If they break through the walls, we're done for, so we'll have to keep them back. You could always use a hand with that. We need to know who's controlling what and make sure we get our cut. Food's going to become scarce. And when they start building those ships, we're going to have to keep people away. What a damn mess, says Rook. I'll do what I can. Ivor explains. I'm leading attacks with Avond every time the dredge get too close to the gates. Listen, we're going to lose fighters in Varl every day like this. I don't need to tell you what happens if nobody is manning this wall. We could always use help. You consider what you want to do now, knowing that any of these tasks will likely take a full day. Um, find a safe place for the caravan to stay, join Ivor in defending the walls, find a source for supplies. Um, let's find a safe place for the caravan to stay first. The entire caravan is spread out in the streets, where they're attracting attention. We could look for a public house, suggests Alette, like Frostvalor. You figured that if you made camp in the open, you could at least keep everyone together. Or, with people leaving the city recently, there might be abandoned houses you could squat in. Uh, public rest house, make camp in an open space, keeping everyone together. Look for abandoned houses, put some people in charge and let them deal with it. Um, let's look for some abandoned houses. With all the people that fled from Borg's Guard when the dredge arrived, you figured there must be abandoned houses around. Sure enough, a few turn up, which will keep people out of the weather. They express concerns over safety. A house full of women and children is sure to draw some attention. Leave some fighters to guard the houses, assign leaders in charge of each house, or help make the houses more defensible. Um, we don't really have the fighters to spare is the problem. We're going to have to help make the houses more defensible, I think. You spend the day alongside the other clansmen trying to reinforce the houses, so they're both defensible. They're defensible in case anyone tries to break in, with both the city locals and dredge in mind. After a long day, you've done as much as you can. Uh... Okay, well, we just lost 
all of our fighters, which is a problem, but that is also, I think, where we're going to have to call it for today. So, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.